What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. In this next video, what we're gonna talk about is the next type of elasticity and it's the income elasticity of demand. And the income elasticity of demand, it's gonna be looking at one product. Basically, what it does is it measures how the quantity demanded of a product changes in response to a change in income. Measures how the quantity demanded of a product changes in response to a change in income. And the formula for it the coefficient, uh, we could label it elasticity with a subscript I here for income. It's basically the percentage change in quantity demanded. Now remember, this is all in terms of one product. So with the cross elasticity of demand, we label product A and B. This is all gonna be in terms of the same product. It's gonna be percentage change in quantity demanded of that product over the percentage change in income of the consumer. Now, the result of this calculation here is gonna tell us the type of good that we are dealing with. And the two main categories for goods or a service is it's either going to be an inferior good or a normal good. Now the difference between these is that an inferior good, the demand decreases with a rise in income. While a normal good is the opposite, the demand increases. with a rise in income. So examples of inferior goods are like uh, canned goods, for example, or public transportation maybe. If the income starts rising, you may uh, get your own car and not take public transportation. Though if it's a very large metropolitan city, even if your income rises, it may still be worth it to take public transfer, uh, transportation, but in general, public transportation is considered an inferior good. We have canned goods, public transportation, maybe cheap motels, stuff like that. Now, demand decreases with a rise in income. If we take that statement related to here, notice that the quantity demanded of an inferior good is going to go down. So notice that the numerator is going to be negative with a rise in income. The denominator is going to be positive. So negative over positive would make this income elasticity of demand coefficient negative. And so when that coefficient is negative, less than zero, then the type of good that you're dealing with is an inferior good. Now, normal good, the demand increases with a rise in income. So notice in this case, the numerator is going to be positive and the denominator is going to be positive as well. Positive over positive would make the coefficient positive. So here for a normal good, that coefficient is positive or greater than zero. Now, sometimes you'll see subcategories for normal goods. Some textbooks may have it, some may not, but I'll mention them anyway. So sometimes you'll see normal goods split up into necessities and luxuries. And necessities, for both of these, notice that the coefficient is going to be positive because they're both a normal good. But for a necessity, the coefficient is going to be between zero and one. 
So it's not going to, that demand is going to increase, but it's not going to increase by that large of an, uh, of an amount. So this could include stuff like uh, water or uh, electricity, right? Necessities. So for example, if your income is lower, you may be living in a smaller place, paying for less electricity. And then if your income rises, you may get a bigger place. So that demand for electricity is going to go up for a bigger place, but it's not going to go up by like a substantial amount, right? So water, electricity, those are necessities. So again, the quantity demanded is increasing, but it's not increasing in a huge amount compared to that income. And so that coefficient, because that numerator is going to be smaller, that coefficient is just going to be between zero and one, still positive, but between zero and one. And then if that coefficient is greater, than one, that's going to be a luxury. So stuff like um, cars or vacations or uh, expensive hotels. Okay, so the quantity demanded of that stuff is increasing a lot more. And so that numerator is going to be greater. And so if that coefficient is greater than one, then we consider it a luxury. So you may have these two subcategories. Your prof or textbook may mention those. But uh, if they don't, then you can just classify the, uh, any good that has a positive coefficient as a normal good. Another term that you may see come up for both of these scenarios here is if that income elasticity of demand is between zero and one, you may see a term that says that good is income inelastic. And then over here, you may see these goods called or uh, classified as income elastic. Many times not, but just in case, thought I would mention. And then you can also show this on a spectrum, if that helps you remember it a little bit better. I've shown the results of the other elasticity calculations that we've done in previous videos on a spectrum. So if we have this, this, we have zero over here. We got negative infinity, positive infinity. So over here, this space would be um, inferior goods. And then this space here would be normal goods. And then the two subcategories, so between zero and one, this space here would be necessities. And then from one to infinity would be luxuries. So the more positive the calculation or the coefficient, the more over to the right on the spectrum, the more of a luxury that item is going to be. And then the more to the left, the more of an inferior good it's going to be. And so what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to show how this works through an actual example. We're going to do an algebraic example.